Kevin, we can't hear you. Are you good to go? You're good to go. Supervisor Moore. Present. Councilwoman McNamara. Present. Councilman Iacilli. Present. Councilman Pell. Present. Councilman Scavone. Present. Thank you. We're going to start the meeting today with a special event. I would like to uh, let everyone know today marks an historic moment in the governance of Southampton. Since 1686, the trustees of the freeholders and commonality of the town of Southampton have played a crucial role in managing and protecting one of our most valuable resources, our waters. As the oldest continually elected board in North America, the trustees have been one of, at the forefront of ensuring the pristine quality of our waterways, a responsibility that has only grown more critical over time. Today, we are proud to announce a groundbreaking agreement between the town board and the trustees this agreement not only reinforces the town's commitment to our waters, but also <coughs> provides the trustees with the ability to independently manage their budget moving forward. This financial autonomy will empower them to meet the growing challenges of protecting and preserving our marine and water resources. This milestone is a testament to the collaboration and shared vision we hold for the future of Southampton Together, we are setting a solid foundation to ensure our waters remain a source of life and beauty for generations to come. And I'd like to thank Assemblyman Thiel, Senator Palumbo, my fellow board members, President Horowitz, and the trustees. No, I don't think so. Oh, they do? Okay, never mind. VIP. Be careful, they might not let you leave. <laughs> No comments on
I would like to say a few words if that's okay. Can we go over there? I would just like to say a few words. I just want to say Hey Scott, yes. if we get done speaking, we'd like to take a picture of both okay. boards together. With all the trustees, like to yeah. board. um, I'd like to say thank you uh, first and foremost to, to Fred Field. It's only Fred Field. Um, it's been a decade of uh, the Times political football, um, but we were able to get this in Anthony Colombo. I want to thank you very much for getting this through the legislature and to the governor for signing this. Um, I want to thank the town board for the vision, and, and your words were spot on. And I, and I thank you for that. Um, and I want to thank my current trustee board, and I want to thank the trustee boards prior that also helped carry us to this day because it, it's been a long time coming. I want to thank the comptroller's office um, of the town, and, and we had our own comptroller. I want to thank the town attorney's office as well, and we had special counsel here. Joseph Lombardo's here. We had other special counsel uh, to guide us. Um, I think this was a process of really good government, you know, a collaboration of all of these different levels of government coming together for the greater good. Um, it was a very delicate yet complex maneuver. We had a lot of captains up here, you know, navigating through uncharted water, waters with a need to get this board to safe harbor. Okay, that's what we did. The board weathered many storms over the centuries and even over the past decade that I've served here. And uh, our experience um, clearly uh, kept us striving for success regardless of how difficult it got. And everybody knows there was a lot of spirited debate, but you have to be fair and honest. It was also a lot of pizza and a lot of cake. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, I want to thank the public for their patience as well. Um, it was a constant education process. Um, after hundreds of years of this board struggling to provide what's so important for our quality of life, uh, our economic engine to our town and the maritime heritage, uh, we finally have this agreement and the tools and the stability and the transparency that we need to build on this framework of our town, this foundation for what I know will be a brighter future for the environment of our community and for the generations to come. And um, I just want to say it's a pleasure serving with you all. I'm proud to represent the freehold and the commonality of the town. I just want to shake all my board members' hands. Thank you, thank you very much. Edward, Joseph, pictures again? Is that yes. what you want to do? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, okay, so the person that is here today, I don't see the past uh, president and past trustee, Eric Schultz. He was the driving mechanism behind this whole tax line in the multiple iterations. And as Fred Bill will attest, there were some moments when Eric and I met with you that, you know, were kind of uh, testy and, and, and very, uh, you know, hard to, you know, digest. But uh, I want to personally thank you. That was incredibly <laughs> diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I heard about the meeting. cycle and then there was friction so I feel by this legislation the way it was written and the way I'm hopefully uh, I hope it's going to work that the friction and the politics are going to get put aside and that we could uh, we all have the same constituents in our town so it's important for all of us to take the constituents first not our pride in our elected positions it's it's the constituents so I want to thank you guys and Ago, you'd have gotten through it. Probably, 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 right. Quicker, right? probably <laughs> right. But I think with the mutual respect of both boards, I think it will work out very smooth, you know, about as smooth as a gravy sandwich. So I think it'll be fine. So thank you very much.
been there. <laughs> have one more thing to say about this subject. We're to give this to the town clerk Sunday because so she has safekeeping. Her safekeeping. <laughs> That's what Put I do right best. Add <laughs> mm -hmm. yes, it to the archives. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> with the dong and pat. Another piece of paper you want. Just don't worry, I'll take good care of it. Thank you, Kramer. Kramer's here. I'd like to continue with the meeting. I move to accept the minutes from the town board meeting of September 19th, 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to accept the minutes of the town board meeting of September 24th, 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I move to approve and accept the minutes of the special town board meeting of October 1st, 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Madam Clerk, could you please read the communications? Certainly. The following communications have been received in the office of the town clerk. We have received public notices from the New York Department of Public Service, notice of informational sessions and public statement hearings concerning PSEG Long Island. On October 9th, um, Village of North Haven, notice of adoption, Village of West Hampton Beach, Planning Board Application 97 Hazelwood Avenue, New York State Liquor License 30-day advance notice to local municipalities for a new application at 1 West Main Street, Hampton Bays. Town Fire Districts 2025, budget hearing dates and times for Bridgehampton, East Quag, Eastport, Flanders, Hampton Bays, North Sea Fire District, Riverhead, Southampton, and West Hampton Beach. Um, the times are listed. Uh, 2025 proposed fire district budgets for the same entities and correspondence emails and letters regarding the following elite towers LP letter of interest for 62 Red Creek Road Hampton Bays community housing fund acquisition of 99 Montauk Highway water mill Ellis Squires house Hampton Bays Hampton Bays pattern book update and Shinnecock Nation's Westwood Gas Station, Hampton Bays. The following report was filed by the Town Comptroller for a September 2024 monthly financial report. And that concludes the communications for this meeting's agenda. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank have you. one uh, 
walk on, and that is the Town Board Resolution ID number 47703, which is the warrant number 19. To add to the agenda, I need to add it to the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Clerk, would you please read the notice for the first public hearing? Certainly. Public hearing number one to consider the acquisition of 6C Squires Pond Road and the hamlet of Hampton Bays and the amend CPF project plan and CPF management and stewardship plan to include the property. Good afternoon, Madam Supervisor, Town Council members. I am here before you today for the first public hearing which is 6C Squires Pond Road. Um, so this is a property that CPF has been considering for quite some time, working with the Moeller family. So I just wanted to say a thank you to the Moeller family as well. Um, you should have also received a letter uh, dated October 3rd from the Moeller family that was circulated. Um, so I just wanted to make you aware of that and if you haven't received that. Um, it came from Thomas Moeller, uh, the son of Barbara Moeller. Um, but obviously, um, you know, lots of town officials were familiar with Henry and Barbara Moeller with historic preservation and preservation within the town. So I just wanted to say that we're very thankful to be working with our family. Um, so the property here is uh, this property of right here. Uh, so highlighted in yellow, this is a 1.5 acre piece of land at 60 Squires Pond Road. Uh, it is formerly Suffolk County tax number 900-175-135.1. Um, so Barbara Moeller is the purported owner of this property and has expressed an interest in selling it for $2 million. Um, it also nicely complements the property we recently acquired, uh, which is for Red Creek Road, which is right directly next to it. Uh, it also complements the CPF holdings um, surrounding the L. Squires house as well as L. Squires, so I'll point to that now. Um, so this is um, also to be added into the CPF management plan. So in this area, we have a target area considered um, in category as open space green belt, Squires Pond target area. So we are also asking that this be, um, the plan be amended to include that property under that designation. Uh, this has very you know, um, extensive wetlands and shorefront on Squires Pond. So this is you know, a, a special pickup um, ecologically, as well as to work with the family who has such a long lasting legacy in the Hampton Bays area. And if I could just say, Henry Moeller was the first town historian that I had the pleasure of working with and was instrumental in getting me started on the digitization of all of our town record books that are now up online. And he, he was wonderful and he loved this town. He loved the history of this town and he protected it like no other, I have to say. And um, we miss him very much. Agreed. And if um, if you guys haven't received that letter, too, I'll forward that letter because the sentiments of their community engagement and historic preservation, as well as preservation, is well put in this letter from their son Thomas. So I'd be happy to circulate that to you guys. Before he passed, I had several conversations with Mr. Moa on his property down there, and he expressed his desire to have his property go to the town in some way, shape, or form. It's absolutely gorgeous down there, and it's a nice piece to add on to uh, contiguous pieces that we have next to it. So I'm happy that his wishes are being fulfilled, and it's working out for the people of the town and the people of Hampton Bays. What's the strip dividing the two? Um, I think it's actually um, uh, old, either the old stream bed um, that kind of was the dividing lines between the properties. It doesn't obviously exactly follow that, um, but this is actually like an old filed map, uh, this portion here. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the, sorry, I think that was the boundary that kind of followed like, you know, the geographic mapped area, but there's a nice little freshwater stream that comes into Squires Pond right there. So I, I believe that's probably why it was mapped and that was kind of mm -hmm. the designating boundary that stream. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I don't have a card on this. Oh, he's a uh, counsel for oh, the Moeller sure. family. <laughs> this is Mike Sinlinski. Good afternoon, members of the board. Michael Sinlinski, 860 Montauk Highway Warden of New York. Um, it's it's pretty uh, appropriate that uh, the day that the trustees sign a, something historic in front of this board, the day we're discussing Mr. Moeller's um, property, and, and I will go back to when I first started as an assistant town attorney in the town, 
I was helping the somewhat new town clerk at the time with something um, and was scolded uh, vigorously by Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mueller about how I handled a certain document in the town's uh, archives. And well, and well so. And, um, I learned a tremendous amount from him at the time uh, and the changes that were made during his course as a town historian were you know, super vital. Um, and Councilman Pell handed uh, the thing to, uh, handed the document today to Ms. Shermeyer and even raised that even more. So this is a beautiful part of uh, the Red Creek area and it will do, uh, it'll serve the town well for generations just like the Moeller family did. So thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. <clears throat> Kevin, is there anyone on Zoom who'd like to be heard? Well, if no one has, has any other questions for Jackie, then I move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Madam Clerk, would you please read the notice for the second public hearing? Certainly. Public hearing number two to consider the acquisition of 27 Tiana Circle in the hamlet of Hampton Bays and amend the CPF project plan and CPF management stewardship plan to include the property. Good afternoon again, Madam Supervisor, Town Council members. So this is the second public hearing we have. Um, this is another special piece in Hampton Bay. Um, so sorry, this, it's this one right here, directly to the, my right. Uh, so this is owned by Joan Choda and Vera P. Choda. They're the purported owners of this 0.7 acre property, formerly known as Suffolk County Tax Member 900-345-2-7.1. Um, so they have expressed interest in selling this property in the amount of $600,000. Um, this property uh, is in the con uh, sorry community preservation plan um, as a wetland target area. So this uh, contains valuable shoreline along Tiana Bay and Shinnecock Bay West and is going to preserve valuable shoreline habitat and ecological features. So this is really um, an impressive site. I do recommend if, if you get a chance to go over there, it's really um, impeccable, especially at sunset. But it also just provides such ecological and habitat resources here for songbirds as well as marine life. Um, it's just it's a good piece to um, pick up. And um, we will also be adding this to the management and stewardship plan. So you can be managing property and steward this property from here on out. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I don't believe there's a card for this public hearing. Um, Kevin, do you have, is there anyone on Zoom that would like to be heard at this public hearing? Well, if no one has any other questions for Jackie, then uh, I move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Madam Clerk, would you please read the notice for the third and final public hearing? Public hearing number three, to consider the acquisition of land at 65 Old River Head Road in the hamlet of Hampton Bays and amend the CPF project plan and the CPF management stewardship plan to include property. Good afternoon again. Uh, Jackie Fenlin, CPF Director. Um, this is another, actually, very special piece. Um, so this is um, being added to our category of historic places. Um, this is due to the relation of David Berluk, um, who is a famous um, artist of futurism, Russian futurism. Um, and so this is um, currently owned by Mary B. Holt, uh, relative to David Berluk. Um, and this is a one-acre parcel located at 65 Old Riverhead Road in Hampton Bays formerly known as 226-2-2.5. Um, uh, so they have, Mary B. Holt has expressed an interest in selling the property for $790,000. Um, and I just wanted to, um, you know, give a little justice to the former resident of the home and the Berluk family. Um, so this is the former home and studio of David Berluk, who is an acclaimed Ukrainian painter. He was known for his involvement with Russian futurism uh, during the 1910s and then fled to the United States with his family um, in 1917. So later he settled in Hampton Bays in the early 1940s. So that's when he came to this location um, at this address. Um, so he continued to paint and was inspired by the natural surroundings of Hampton Bays. Um, he also exhibited his works locally, uh, created an artist colony with uh, fellow painters in the Hamlet uh, known as the Hampton Bays Arts Group. Um, so his collections are in museums throughout the world including just a couple, which I'll um, allude to, which is MoMA and the, Metro, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. 
Um, so these, um, this, this is a place where it's, um, you know, of historic relevance is directly related to the person who has once lived here and the family that currently owns it. Um, so he was, um, you know, he contributed to local and cultural landscape and it's, you know, a very important opportunity, especially for the Hampton Gates community uh, to preserve this property for the historic resource. Um, Thank you. Gotcha. I noticed that Julie Green is here, a <coughs> town historian. I was just going to introduce her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just wanted to ask before I go to the, will there be a stewardship agreement? Yeah, so uh, what's really nice with this one is that we will reached out early on, and thanks to the Hampton Bay's Historical Society for also making the connection. Um, I can ask them to yeah, hire again, B. Uh, but the East End Arts Council is um, our, our steward that we've been uh, speaking to, so they're very excited about the opportunity. So after I think we hear from Julie Green, our town historian, I'd like to welcome Wendy Weiss up, who's the director of the East End Arts Council. And also, I did not realize that my friend Ian is the grandson, who's very talented too. Maybe he would like to say something about his grandson. Absolutely. Well, it's a public hearing, so I, I'd love to hear from the family members as well. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah, so we also have Greg Devoe, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, um, but he, we've been negotiating with him um, for the project. So I'm sure the family would like to come up and, um, you know, we're happy to accomplish this. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, Madam Supervisor, Town Council, um, Julie Green, Town Historian. Um, so this is a wonderful property, um, and I kind of wanted to speak to the localness of it. Um, he's a renowned artist, um, as Jackie mentioned. He's in uh, countless um, museums throughout the world, the MoMA, the Met. I'm actually, I wrote on this um, historic report that it's a draft. I've been talking with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They have um, a few of his paintings that he did here in um, Hampton Bays are actually called uh, named in Hampton Bays in 1945 and Hampton Bays in 1944, I believe, and um, they're 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 photographing the works of art for me um, so that we can have um, copies of what those they're 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 online but they're just tiny little thumbnails. So um, when the Burleyaks came here in 1940, um, they set up David Burleyak set up a, kind of an artist colony here in Hampton Bays. Um, they were very local, uh, they were very um, community minded. Um, their two sons um, actually served in World War II um, out of Hampton Bays. They are on the wall at the VFW across um, on Ponquag Avenue. Their names are there. Um, so they built a, um, a co an artist colony with other fellow immigrants uh, from Eastern Europe. Um, and this, this home um, and this property is where that was kind of their clubhouse. Um, so David Burley can close the front porch and turn that into his art studio. There are pictures of, of his studio. Um, sorry, I didn't remember the pages, um, but they're in the back. You'll see some paintings. So I included a lot of his early paintings um, from the teens when he was living in uh, Russia. Um, the family fled um, during the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. They made their way through Siberia. Then they, then they landed in Japan in the 1920s. They actually... The Japanese council wanted them to stay. They wanted him to be the court painter um, in Japan, uh, but he, his, his goal was to get to America. So he finally landed here in America in 1923. He was um, made a United States citizen in 1930, um, and he's got many awards posthumously um, after 1967 when he did pass away here, right here in Ham Hampton Bays. So you can see some of his artwork um, uh, that I included um, and his family photographs. And um, one really nice thing is when they first came in the 1940s, one of the first places after the war where they set up um, ex exhibits was at the Parish Hall of St. Mary's Episcopal Church on Ponquaga Avenue in Hampton Bays. Um, so they had numerous um, exhibits. I found a clipping for night, their second annual, so I think they had at least eight um, annual um, exhibits there at Hampton Bays. They set up a, a, an art school on his younger son, Nicholas, um, was an artist as well, and he set up an art school um, in the 40s after they came back from the war. And um, his work is, is brilliant. He kind of runs a, kind of the entire gamut of early uh, 20th century uh, painting um, and artwork. Um, it's pretty kind of 
really interesting. And the one of the, the paintings that's in the um, Metropolitan Museum of Art um, was was painted in front of the Canoe Place in when he's looking out over um, over Shinnecock Bay. And I'd love to get a, a, an idea of what that painting looks like from 1940s because it would be really interesting. It says that Hercules was to the side. This was the big statue that was um, given to Stony Brook uh, that we no longer have. So I'd really like to see um, a big blown up image of that. And one last little local connection um, for a town property that we own is the Lizon Hat Shop, which is also in Hampton Bays next to the Prosper King House. Those are two town owned properties um, that are stewarded by the Hampton Bays Historical Society. Walter King was the milliner of the Lizon Hat Shop. Um, his son, Myron, um, King moved to Tennessee. They wintered in Tennessee, and Myron uh, King set up the Lizon Galleries in Tennessee, um, in Nashville. And in 1961, just six years before um, Mr. Burley um, passed away, they went to Tennessee and they held an exhibit sponsored by the Lizon Galleries. So there's a full circle connection with Hampton Bays, the Burleyucks, even going all the way to Tennessee to see the King family there. So. Um, thank you very much, and I um, really look forward to working with the East End Arts Council um, and, and a possible stewardship of this property. It's well worth it. Uh, thank you, thank you, Julie, sure. for, for you. providing that overview of the history. And I just want to say uh, I know how much work went into this between you know the arts advocates and CPF and the town historian. I know uh, this has been sort of a long time coming, so I know there was a lot of work that went in. Um, I also want to say this is a great testament to, to the, the lives and history of some of our Eastern European, Russian, and Ukrainian immigrants that live here in Southampton. Um, there, there are um, uh, quite a bit of folks who have history that goes back to Eastern Europe and Russian and Ukraine. So uh, I think it's very timely given what's going on in the right. world. So it's, it's a really great effort. Absolutely. It's a, it's a nice time, the period of time at this moment where everybody knows what Ukraine is to know that this is, um, you know, an artist from that homeland. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to say that, you know, in some of the other, in East Hampton, there's like artist colonies that we all know about. But David Berlick, he he was exhibited at the Guild, Guild Hall with Pollock. I mean, they were all friends. They all hung out together. So it's nice to have this artist colony that nobody really knew yeah. about here in, right here in Hampton Bays, um, in the town of Southampton, and that we can um, support this um, um, and keep, keep his memory alive and his legacy here in Hampton Bays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting. Good afternoon, and thank you very much um, for your considerations today. My name is Wendy Weiss. Uh, I live in Bridgehampton, 93 Forward Road, which is where I'm the fourth generation in my home there. So. Being coming involved in this project is not only something that I think is really exciting for the East End Arts Council, but also it's kind of exciting for me uh, being somebody that's from here. And now that I am back home looking to really preserve um, what we have here on the East End, it's very special. Uh, the East End Arts Council was formed in 1972. It's um, been, uh, I've been there since 2020 where I actually joined the board. and. I became appointed the executive director in this just this past July. So I went from being on the board to being a part-time employee to growing into the creative director role to now being in the executive director role. Uh, I became involved with this um, discussion about the Berluk House and from the very beginning when we were first connected. Uh, and since I've been <coughs> in the D role, I've really just gotten so excited and so involved with, him, with it. <coughs> Um, East End Arts is really the only regional arts council here on the East End, uh, and it got kind of pigeonholed into the Riverhead area for a very long time. And since I've been involved over the last uh, four years, we've really expanded our reach. So we are now building this community that is well outside of Riverhead, including a lot of South Fork artists, a lot of North Fork artists. Um, we actually have a lot of artists in our member circle that also have our on permanent collection at the same places that Julie mentioned um, and have really good uh, connections with the Nassau County Museum of Art and other big institutions that believe in what we have to offer and will be very um, advantageous in pushing this project forward by taking stewardship. Uh, we, I'm most excited to work closely with the Berluk family so that we can make sure that we are really 
putting that, like Julie said, putting this artist colony into a spotlight that people didn't know existed before because East Hampton got all of the attention, which we're kind of used to. But, um, you know, uh, and really showing what the Hampton Bays area, what the Southampton town area has um, in the history of the arts here. So um, I want to make sure that David's legacy is really uplifted and that future generations of artists out here on the East End are inspired and can learn from that history and can come together because of this project. Is the uh, studio intact now or is that some, if not, is that something that would be recreated? Uh, yes, my understanding is that there will be some renovations necessary on the house. I have been there, of course. Um, there is the house itself and there are three outbuildings, which you can see in the map here. Um, all of the outbuildings are actually, when I saw them, were full of art and all of the art was in great shape. So I'm going to assume that they're in pretty good condition, uh, all things considered. I think Greg will be able to answer more specifics about um, the property itself and the state that it currently is in. Um, but it's very inhabitable at this, this time. It's just not modernized. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wendy, I just want to also mention and publicly appreciate all the work that East End Arts does. You mentioned expanding beyond the current reach. Um, I know you've been doing a lot of work with our Southampton Town Youth Bureau. And yes. I just want to uh, yeah. just extend uh, the town board's uh, thanks to you and, and East End Arts for partnering with, with the Youth Bureau on all these wonderful functions from Hampton's Got Talent to Battle of the Bands, all of that work is so greatly appreciated. Oh, thank you for that. They've mm -hmm. been a pleasure to work with. You know, anything that we can do to um, put kids in the spotlight is always something that really drives us forward. So yeah. thank you for mm -hmm. them, for thanks to them for being a part of it as yeah. well. Yep. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Well, I do have uh, three cards. The first one is Greg. <laughs> Greg, how do you pronounce your last name? It's Jibak. It's a French Canadian. Thank yeah. you. All right, good afternoon, uh, Madam Supervisors, Counselors, members of the public. Uh, my name is Greg Javug, and I'm uh, Mary Berlug's stepson and her power of attorney. Uh, Mary is the owner of 65 Old Riverhead Road and David Berlug's granddaughter. Um, I'd like just to take a moment to express the family's sincere gratitude to the town of Southampton for considering uh, this property for preservation and really the overwhelming local and international support for this project. Um, today is the culmination of years of effort by the family, some here today, uh, including me and Berlou, um, and those watching online, um, many Canadians. Um, uh, you know, watching over the house and protecting and promoting David's legacy. And more recently, uh, the coming together of community partners, the CPF, Jackie, Julie, Dan, they've all been excellent to, to work with over the last year. Uh, East End Arts, starting with Diane Burke, uh, now Lennon Weiss, and board members, and the Hampton Bay's Historical Society, Brenda Sinclair. Uh, with your support, uh, we look forward to working with the community to continue working with the community to make the Billy Home a truly remarkable place uh, where new artists can be inspired and grow just as they did years ago under David's encouragement and friendship. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's worth knowing we did get letters from pretty much all over the world in support of this. So yes. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. It really was. Even Japan. Yep. Yeah, he's quite famous there actually. Uh, you know, during his two years that he spent in Japan, uh, he painted for the emperor and uh, for many others. And uh, his works are in a number of uh, institutions. So yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Ian Groliak. <coughs> My grandfather, uh, David Berliuk, he excelled as an artist, but I think what he really excelled at was collaboration with other artists. At a young age, he um, joined the Blue Rider group, which included Kandinsky, Paul Klee, Gabrielle Munster, uh, others. Um, and that started the uh, Futurist movement in Russia, and it was in the very early stages of the Futurism in, in Europe at the time. Um, he ended up 
World War I came or, along and he ended up traveling across Siberia um, during the Russian Revolution. Uh, very similar to the trip that Dr. Zhivago took, if you've ever seen the movie where he went across I and mean, there was a war going on for years. He, as other people noted, moved to Japan for a few years. Um, when he came to the U.S., he was kind of ahead of things. Uh, the U.S. really wasn't ready for futurist art at that time. But by the time the 30s came along, there was a growing art movement. And he befriended the people that many of them moved out to the Hamptons after he bought the place in Hampton Bays. Um, Nikolai Sikovsky was out here, lived in North Sea. Um, there was uh, Milton Avery, George Constant, uh, the Sawyer brothers. Uh, other members that came out regularly from the city were uh, John Graham and Arshar Gorky. Um, those artists, many of those artists I mentioned have sold at auction for an excess of $50 million for a single piece of artwork. My grandfather, because he produced in his lifetime over 18,000 works, um, he doesn't command that kind of money, although he has sold pieces for over a million dollars. Um, or at least his pieces sell for that in his lifetime, they didn't sell for that much. But um, he collaborated with those people that I mentioned who were in the Hampton uh, art group there. Uh, John Graham was credited with mentoring uh, Arshile Gorky, um, Jackson Pollock, uh, Rothko, uh, de Kooning. So all of those artists that you think of as the East Hampton artists, when they were getting started, they were collaborating with my grandfather and other members of that uh, Hampton art group, which I think, as I say, the fact that he collaborated like that with so many people that is really, I think, his biggest legacy. And I want to thank the uh, East Hampton Arts Council and the CPF and, and the board for acquiring this property. I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing for the town. And the last thing I want to add is living out here in the town, I'm always amazed at the number of people who come up to me and they find out I'm related to the artist and they say, oh, you know, my parents bought a painting from him when he had the gallery on Squire Town Road. And, you know, is it worth anything or we have this or, oh, you know, we've got a Moses Sawyer, you know, uh, you know, what do you know about Moses Sawyer or this or that? And there's such a connection in the town with so many people. He used to go to St. Rosalie's Church. There were times he'd go to, I guess, St. Anne's, the Presbyterian Church down, down at the end of the street. He was always um, introducing himself. He was a self-promoter. And at the time when he was alive, he could go into the local drugstore or any one of the stores in town. And there were the postcards constantly. My grandmother had the postcards made with the uh, different pictures on them and um, you know promoted the gallery, promoted the other artists in the um, group. He had the gallery on Squire Town Road there um, and he, of course he showed the other artists as well there and stuff and I think it's a great thing. And as a last note, she was probably one of the best customers the Luzon Hat Shop ever had. She was constantly up there and um, you know, she knew Myron King and Ray King, who was also up there, and the others. And it's there's a lot of connection with the town, and I think it's a great thing that the town is doing this. So thank you all, and I especially want to thank Greg for seeing this through and dealing with having the town acquire this. He could have said, "Well, let me just sell this quick." You know, the real estate's high, and it would have been a shame to have that happen. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Paradise. Amy Paradise. Hello. I just thought I'd add some local color. Um, <laughs> across the street and down the way a little bit from the Baruch property lived Dames and Marie Edwards. Um, Marie Zerny Edwards came, was a displaced uh, goche from hard to describe it. It's kind of Croatia, Serbia, that area is all been redone now. Um, they were friends with the Berluks. We have a Christmas card that Mr. Berluk made and sent, and they used to visit with each other. 
and they may possibly have inspired their daughter who became in her. We have a, a great painting that she made of, of the farm. It backs up to what's now the uh, Good Round Park. The two houses are still there. The little one in front was made from chicken coops. <laughs> That's where they lived at the end of their life. So it's just, it was fascinating to see this pop up and yeah, real uh, local connections. Mm -hmm. It's terrific that it's getting saved so quickly. How fast did you do this? Remember that thought. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, is there anyone on Zoom who'd like to be heard? <clears throat> Does anybody else have any questions? If there's nothing else, then I, I move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That brings us to the public portion. Uh, Amy, you're up again. <laughs> Board. Um, yes. For Amy Paradise. I sent you all a letter. I drove by the Ellis Squire's house. It has been vandalized. The windows are boarded up. A million dollars was voted for its restoration last year. I was here at the meeting when that was done. Stop sitting on your hands and get the building taken care of. It deserves it. It's a national landmark. You're preserving all this property around Squire's Pond, which came with that house originally and they separated out three acres. I've been writing to the town now for, I think, 13 years about this property. The first, when we first wrote, it was like, oh, it'll cost $300,000 to fix it up. Look where we are now. Please stop. You did, you did the Methodist Point property like that. You've done the Burluk House like that 13 years, 14, I forget when they took this property. And there it rots into the ground. It's a disgrace. The town of East Hampton has a farm museum. Riverhead has the Halleck House farm. This is a circa 1800 building of a founding member of the community. I said we could illustrate our maritime history. We could illustrate the independent self-reliant people that used to live here. And there it rots. Enough. Do something. There are people that work on old houses like that. I've got a neighbor who's retired now. There's a fella here in town. Mr. Gaynor does nothing but old houses. Maybe you could talk to some people. They're all, they are around. But it just gets ignored because I can't find 500 people to write in. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll talk to our CPF director about it and find out what the status is and what. It, it had a, they put it in a preservation agreement for like 10 years and there mm -hmm. it sat they did nothing the people that they gave the stewardship agreement to which the town historian has told me that that agreement has been rescinded there is no reason that there's nothing getting done except inaction we'll look into it it was rescinded and we moved it over to CPF. Is that correct? I mean, yes. you know, I, I was here we did that yeah. and we earmarked money for it so thank yeah. you for coming up we, we share your concern and did that. I'm sorry. I'm really annoyed with that. We'll look into it. I'm annoyed. I didn't say that. I said Just, that we, it really is time we moved to it into CPF something. funds Thank and earmarked for money for it. Up again. Yes, That's what you. I said. Thank you. We can speak during public portion. I lived upstate for a while, and when I first moved back down here in 1995, I had met the two elderly women who lived in that house. Uh, in fact, plowed their snow, uh, plowed their driveway a couple of times with snow. And I'd had an old house in upstate New York. It was built in 1790. So I went inside and talked to them a bit. And it's a beautiful house, and mm -hmm. to think that it's going to shame is or going to waste is, is a shame. So I'd like to encourage you to do all you can to fix that up. Right. The previous steward was not was not doing exactly what's being asked here. So that's why we acted to move it over to the Community Preservation Fund. That does have the funding, and we do have funds earmarked for it. I appreciate you coming. Okay, in. I just yeah. wanted to say that as somebody who's been in the house mm -hmm. and seen it, and who knows old houses, it is a, you know, an extraordinary piece of property. So thank you. Thanks. All 
right, Ken Tetcher. Hi, Kim Tetro, Cornell Cooperative Extension. Excuse my appearance. I'm coming from my oh, penultimate Tiana Tuesday workout where the town gave us one of the most outstanding oyster gardening annexes uh, 15 years ago in this room. And it's a workout, but uh, it's a great, great project. And I, while I'm standing up here, I thank Southampton for allowing the town to have a, a real flagship program for the SPAT program, which is going into my 25th year with Cornell on uh, community oyster gardening. Uh, I, I'm here today to just lend support to Mauritius Bay project uh, that was at a meeting recently, and I think there was uh, a misunderstanding with their organization and our partnership with Cornell. Uh, I've been working with Mauritius Bay Project for 12 years in very similar things to what I do at Cornell, which is community, restoration, shellfish, water quality, all the nice things that we want in our town. And Mauritius Bay has been a, a, a great partner and a, uh, a, a wonderful addition to the mission of what we're trying to do in, in our collective towns. Uh, I'm just here to support the fa and, and open up to, to the board that I, I'm here for any kind of questions if they come up about Mauritius Bay. Uh, they are independent, they're their own 501c3, uh, but we do have an excellent working relationship and I think there was a misunderstanding with some members with it. Cornell Cooperative Extension is a big organization. Uh, communication is all, all often not uh, fully understood. So I think this project caught a lot of folks off guard uh, within the Marine program. But uh, I, I'm here to just kind of put any fires that might be raging out there and lend my support. Well, that's good to have that clarification. Anytime that I can help clarify anything to do with community, shellfish, uh, if you want to do a raw bar, we, <laughs> you know, we, we, we can cover a lot. And we've had, I have to say, with Cornell Cooperative Extension and the town of Southampton, we've had a wonderful, wonderful relationship, which, which is just growing. And... The buzz is in the in the air about how important and, and where the, all these connections lie. So I'm, I'm here to help if you ever need anything on my end. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank you, you can you. even get your own uniform. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering about that. Well, you have to you have to keep it on for 25 years okay. before it's got all the proper holes. And I'm whatnot. sure it's like that. I did dust the mud off, so <laughs> I tried my best, but it came directly from there. I'm going back there with a truck and a trailer load full of all Southampton beautiful oysters. And we Thanks. can have a member program. Ten years now. Mm -hmm. She can vouch for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming up and saying so. And I know, Aram, you're here on the same matter. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Supervisor, members of the town board, Aram Turchuni in West Hampton Beach. On behalf of the uh, Merchants Bay Project, um, I mean, I don't. Uh, it's tough to follow Kim because he's just the real deal. Uh, he's helped us tremendously get our program from uh, 10,000 oysters in year one to over 700,000 oysters in this past year. And um, with the uh, assistance of the town board and the uh, Rainer Fish uh, Shack project, we hope to push that over a million. Uh, and that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Um, I have some materials I'd just like to hand up to the board uh, that provide some clarification of the different budget items, uh, which we have reduced, and uh, also uh, some roles of the various people within the program. Thank you. Aaron. Aaron. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, and and uh, clearly, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer those. Thank you. Thank 
clever. Gail Lombardi. Thank you, Gail. Okay, to be clear, I'm speaking on my own behalf. I don't know if Michael Wright's still here, but I'm speaking on my own behalf and not as a member of any association. I want to echo um, um, Amy Paradise's comments, though. You know, we had the same thing with the former chamber building. You know, you guys bought, and it was before your time, you bought it, you know, let it deteriorate, and it's see, and there's another building on, on uh, all the way up to Quiettown Road. It is a pattern, and I just want to commend you all for moving forward, though, on buying that property, the historic property. I heard about the discussions back on the Anacom Holtz um, period. So it sat in abeyance for eight years during the Schneider administration, so kudos to this board on that. Not so much kudos on the patent. Okay, so I didn't entrust, you know, I've come to this board for a number of years, it's been over 10 years, looking for you guys to just follow the law, do a comprehensive review and a comprehensive plan. And I do want to thank um, Supervisor Moore for having the, um, it's been so gracious coming to our, coming to the uh, Civic Association meeting and have to listen to the frustrations of the residents about the town's um, handling of the Westwoods, and as well as just general mistrust of the community um, still, and it's hard to get past it. But as I said, I, I, I really, um, you know, we've entrusted you to protect the residents' safety and well-being of our fragile environment that can be wiped out in a heartbeat. That's what's going on in Florida. Um, it makes me physically sick to see you guys have these great discussions about saving the history of Hampton Bays, and at the same time, uh, the other sides are now destroying it by um, succumbing to the overdevelopment of Hampton Bays. So I have never come to this board and say I want a toy store or a men's clothing store. I've come to this town board and asked you to follow the law, the comprehensive um, environmental review, and and meet with the community, have um, real and interactive um, interaction with the community. We can't be expected to like, work, uh, like watch the work sessions, we don't get to ask questions. So I know that there's some new board members, but the, the process and <coughs> planning is still broken. I mean, it, you know, you appear to equate time lapsed with um, an accurate work product. As the saying goes, you can do things over and over again. You can't do things right the first time, so you have to do it over and over and over again and spend more time doing it, and I'll equate that to the pattern book. Um, I also think sometimes you weaponize time that you hope that will go away. You drag it out long enough and you hope it will go away. Um, you continue to um, set the town up for lit litigation and set the communities up for failure, and if you look at the best a process, the Bel Air process, the Riverside redevelopment process, the Hampton Bays HBDOD, and now the Westwoods. You've, you set up the town for litigation and you fail the community. So, the specific to the pattern book, since I only have probably a half a minute left, um, I just want to say that the pattern book is not the book to the pictures that you have represented to the community. It sets the tone for um, high density residential development. And you will have created a legal quagmire now by interjecting Mr. Paola's housing plan. It's in the Mac, uh, Capitol and McNamara's quoting in South Hampton Press this week about uh, you know, potentially being um, eligible for funding. You, you skipped it right over an unbiased uh, addition to the comprehensive plan and you know have created a, a legal quagmire that I guarantee will be litigated. I said right now my file is probably two feet high of all this legal quagmire that we, you, you may not agree um, is conflicts of interest and you know overlapping um, uh, concerns and overlapping um, um, 30 seconds um, initiatives um, but it will at some point um, be litigated and um, so the pattern book right now is right for litigation but I'll check I have 120 days to check that when we, when we approve it at this board meeting without an environmental review, 
with all of the this year, all of the conflicts of interest, all of the letters to the editor, the agendas, comments by this board, comments from members of the zoning board of appeals, con comments of former town council people members. Four minutes. Um, will be entered into evidence. So I hope it is what it is. You're going to approve it, but I'm hoping that you will hopefully do a better job in the future and, um, you know, not <coughs> set the town up for litigation and set our, our communities for failure. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. And I, I just want to note that um, since the last meeting, um, we did make the cha two changes on page four and page 22 to remove the word road from Good Ground Park in those two locations, just so you're aware. Uh, okay, next is Robert Tyson. A lot of great things happened today. I really enjoyed today. I think that um, the independence, excuse me, I've gained weight since the last time I was here. Uh, the the uh, independence of the uh, trustees and that they have the ability now to, excuse me, You're eating up your time. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's going to be brief anyway, okay? So um, I urge the board not to accept the pattern book. Uh, by the way, my name is Robert Tyson, Hampton Bays. I urge the board not to accept the existing uh, edition of the pattern book for the following reasons, okay? On page 7, it says in the opening paragraph, you should also reference other applicable codes of the town of Southampton. Now, the word other means being or designated the remaining one of two or more. That essentially means, and that sentence means, that this pattern book is and could be interpreted as code. Okay? The word other should not be in there. Okay? Don't shake your head. I know English. Okay? On page 10, uh, having been told by board members that Good Ground Park will not be connected by streets, it says on page 10, and I quote, at a minimum, it is recommended that a north-south connection is made from the Long Island Railroad Station to Montauk Highway and from Montauk Highway to Good Ground Park. On page 52, architectural styles, it lists four styles that each of the four styles is already present in Hampton Bays and would be appropriate for future development. One of those is maritime mercantile. Following that line on page 66, where it describes maritime, <clears throat> maritime mercantile, it says, they range in size from only one store, one story, small shops of individual merchants, all the way to a three and four story tall buildings. Um, that seems to indicate that if someone wanted to go with the design of maritime mercantile, that they could design a building of three and four stories. 30 seconds. That's it on the patent book. I urge you to at least review it and make it what it is being advertised as what it is, as a architectural book, not a Three companion minutes. to the town code. Okay. Uh, and in closing, I reviewed the September 30th, BEPS meeting. I thought it was um, loaded with very interesting information. My one comment is, is that Supervisor Moore, you were at
at a point in the meeting asking about if a 300 foot boundary would be adequate and you were interrupted by a staff member and talked over and Four been minutes. told that it was already all this work has been done, okay, and that we shouldn't bother looking at that anymore, okay? I think that you should be entitled to finish your thought and not have staff interrupt you. Thank you. All right, Linda Wells. <laughs> Linda Wells, Hampton Bays, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you in person. I'm very happy to do it. Uh, I do er also urge you to take all the time you need, even if it means taking a little more time, to really review the whole pattern book again, to be sure that there's nothing else in there that indicates that this is more than a, an architectural design guideline. Very important, because in the future, you know, unintended consequences, you get things that if you don't take enough time to really study it, you might find that you don't like. The only other point I have is that the first thing I always look at when I'm looking at something that's happening in the town is the resolution or the ordinance because that's an official record that you can always find online. And I find that in reviewing this one that for the adoption of the pattern book that it had a lot of language from the quarter, last corridor study that might not relate to architectural design. It does talk about a new North Main Street in the ordinance. And I think this ordinance can get where, or resolution can get where it needs to go ultimately without that language, which may cause some confusion about what this architectural design uh, is all about. And to be honest with you, the paragraphs in there are a bit superfluous to the whole point. I'm not sure you need any of it. And you want to avoid um, confusion in the future, especially in an official document. So as much attention should be paid to the resolutions as to the documents that they're approving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, is there anyone on Zoom that wishes to be heard in public portion? Yes, Move this way. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to the board. Uh, my name is John Leonard. I am a resident and business owner in Hampton Bays, and I am the president of the Hampton Bays Alliance. Um, I am here to speak about uh, the board's adoption of the pattern book. I think that we've had a number of um, very productive um, hearings with regard to the pattern book. Um, we all acknowledge that it is a um, aspirational document to be made uh, a, an amendment to the comprehensive plan. We've removed all instances of what could be uh, uh, in a violation of the zoning code. Um, to uh, and made sure that we removed all uh, zoning elements. I really don't think that this board needs to take any more time um, in order to review this document anymore. If there were any changes that anybody wanted to suggest, the time for that has long passed as we've had, what, three hearings on um, this 100-page document. Um, also, for the purpose uh, of uh, uh, assuaging some comments, uh, many of the pictures have been removed from it. So, uh, you know, the time uh, has come to pass this. There is a great uh, 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 zeal for this uh, project, these projects to move forward for revitalization and redevelopment in Hampton Bays to happen. Um, we had a, uh, the Hampton Bays Alliance had a very um, well attended, almost 150 people showed up at a meet and greet for Mr. Cayola to, uh, and many of them discussed um, their interest in revitalization and redevelopment in concept. Um, we uh, 
have, in, for the purpose of these hearings, uh, submitted um, 84 letters from business owners, residents, mostly residents, 74 residents, um, expressing uh, their desire to move forward with the pattern book and that the town council should adopt it. Um, and on Wednesday, we had a very well attended, almost uh, over 50 people in attendance to a um, open house with um, council members Ayasili and McNamara, where uh, many people in the community of a varying, a very diverse group in terms of um, age, um, expressing their support to move forward. I, most, of the, most of the people's comments were, when can this all begin? So the pattern book is a first step in the process of revitalizing Hampton Bays. It's a wonderful project that will, um, that will standardize what uh, uh, Hampton Bays historically uh, would look like and be- um, 30 seconds. Move forward with it. And I'd also like to point out, I want this board to very clearly understand what Ms. Lombardi said to you today. She has threatened you with litigation. And I think that needs, you, you need to take pause when you hear something like that without even having a potential development plan in front of her. She says that she has a huge stack of documents that are all going to become exhibits. Three minutes. Heed. This board needs to take heed and to steal itself. There mm. are those in our community who would use such bullying tactics in order to stop things that they don't want to see happen. Do not let that happen to you. We put you in uh, office for reasons. And those reasons are that we want you to make reasonable, rational judgments and to take action where necessary. And this is something that you should be taking action on. And I really don't think that this board should be, um, uh, should cower to the likes of someone coming before you and threatening litigation when there's nothing even in front of them. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just getting a clarification. Kevin, is there anyone else on um, Sorry. on Zoom that wishes to be heard? That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. I'm sorry. What, did you I'm want to hand something I, up? Sure. All right, uh, well, if there's no other comments, then I move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, um, before we start with the resolutions, I believe, Michael, you wanted to... Um... Yeah, if I, I'd like to make a motion just to take Town Board Resolution 2024-1190 uh, out of order um, so that our uh, highway superintendent could get back to work. Second. Uh, Can you tell me what page <laughs> you're on, please? Yes, page 41. Thank you. I'll second that motion. Um, this is a, a town board. This is a resolution uh, to notice a public hearing to consider amending Chapter 312 to authorize stop signs on Lumber Lane at the intersection of Maple Lane in Bridgehampton in order to create an all-way stop intersection. I know, uh, Mr. Highway Superintendent, if you'd like to just come up and explain the process of how we how we got here. Yeah, I just want to make sure he, he explains it just for the public. Charlie McArdle, Highway Superintendent. Uh, so after numerous uh, requests from residents of that area in Bridgehampton, we directed our in-house engineers to do a traffic study, and the result came out that there is the need for the stop signs on Lumber and Maple. Um, so I hope the town board would support it. I don't think there's anyone here against it, so I appreciate your time. But I do want to say one thing, that as legislators, if you either don't do anything to bring a resolution forward, or even worse, you get asked to bring a resolution forward and you don't, try not to jump on as a co-sponsor to make like, now you're interested, because you weren't before. That goes not for this, this goes for every issue. Don't just jump on if you didn't do anything to get it here. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Yeah. All right, thank you. 
Uh, so, uh, what would we like to? What would, would, would we like to? So, did you move like, to take it out of order? Yep. Yes. Can we? Can we make a motion? I can make a motion. You make a motion. I second it. Okay. That was that was to take it out of order. Now we need to move. Now okay. we need a motion to pass it. Yeah. Can we yep. do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We voted to take it out of order. Correct. Can we make a motion? So yes. now read the town board resolution. Town board resolution 2024-1190. Notice of public hearing to consider amending chapter 312 to authorize stop signs on Lumber Lane at the intersection of Maple Lane and Birchampton in order to create an all-way stop intersection. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And, and Thank just you for the clerk's edification, we were all in support of taking it out of order, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't think we voted. No. No. But I did say aye. Town Thank board you. resolution 2024-1154. To authorize the comptroller to pay S and P Global ratings as it relates to the 2024 Town of Southampton's credit rating for its public improvement serial bond. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 2024-1155, co-sponsored with Councilman Warren McMara, authorized to purchase, purchase a excavator and a skid steer from H O Pen Company Inc. Using NYS contract with Caterpillar Inc. Second. All Sorry. in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024 1156, co sponsored by Council Members Silvoni and Pell, to authorize the supervisor to execute a contract amendment with L.K. McLean Associates Engineering and Surveying DPC to provide professional services for Riverside Maritime Park. Accessible kayak launch and fishing pier in Riverside. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 1157 of 2024, co sponsor with Council Member Yuselli, to authorize the supervisor to issue a satisfaction of a buyer benefit note and mortgage on a community benefit unit. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024 1158, co sponsored with Council Members Scavoni and Iasili. To authorize the supervisor to sign a contract with Nelson and Pope for professional services related to solar photovoltaic installation at Town Hall. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1159 to authorize the rental of equipment from the Suffolk County contract for construction equipment and dredging services with H&L Contracting LLC. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1160. To authorize the supervisor to execute a contract with Auctions International, Inc. for the sale of surplus equipment owned by the town. Second. All in favor? Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1161, co-sponsored with Council Mattel. To authorize the supervisor to execute an agreement with PW Grocer Consulting, Inc. to provide engineering design services for potential landfill improvements for the North Sea Landfill. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1162 to authorize the supervisor to sign a contract with Johnson Control Security Solutions for alarm system monitoring and maintenance at David Trohan Community Center located at 655 Flanders Road, Flanders, New York. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1163 to authorize the supervisor to sign a contract with Johnson Control Security Solutions for alarm system monitoring and maintenance at the Barkus House CPF office located at 24 West Montauk Highway, Hampton Bay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 1164 of 2024, co-sponsored Council Member Yuselli, to authorize the supervisor to sign a no-cost contract extension for the Reeves Bay Catwalk and Barn Restoration with Chesterfield Associates Incorporated. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 2024-1165. Authorize the supervisor to sign an agreement with Briscoe Protective LLC for the Schaffner House, located at 1061 Bridgehampton, Sag Harbor, Turnpike, New York. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1166 to authorize the supervisor to sign an agreement with the Long Island Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, Inc. to provide an employee assistance program and sexual harassment training. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 1167 of 2024, authorizing the supervisor to sign an amendment to the Youth Bureau contract for basketball clinics. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 1168 of 2024. This is to recall and amend resolution 2024-886 to authorize the supervisor to sign a contract with Citizen Science Learning Incorporated, Incorporated to obtain weekly samples from freshwater bodies throughout the Adopt a Pond program to monitor harmful algal blooms and perform seasonal analysis for nitrogen and phosphorus compounds. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 2024. Dash one one six nine. Um, do we call and amend Town Board Resolution twenty twenty four dash one zero zero six authorized purchase of a drop deck tilt drop deck tilt trailer from Fowler Trail Inc. using source for contract. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution twenty twenty four dash one one seven zero co sponsored with Councilwoman McNamara. The 2024 Notice to Bidders for Electronic Waste Removal, Recycling, and Disposal Program. Second. All in favor? Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1171, co-sponsored with Councilman Scrivoni, to amend the 2024 Adopted Budget for Southampton Ambulance and West Hampton Ambulance. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1172 to amend the 2024 budget for various departments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1173 to amend the 2024-2028 capital budget for Bridgehampton BECD and the Sagaponic BECD nourishment projects. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1174, co-sponsored with Councilman Scrivoni, to amend the 2024-2028 capital budget for CPF Nathaniel Rogers House Project and the 2024 adopted budget for CPF Stewardship Program. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1175 to reappoint Alan Piliero to the Board of Assessment Review. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1176 to appoint David Glazer to the Planning Board. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 1177 of 20. 24, a resolution extending the final report of findings and recommendations of the Traffic Mitigation and Safety Task Force to the Town Board. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 1178 of 2024. This is a resolution of adoption amending Southampton Town Code Chapter 298 to amend Article 8 uh, to authorize uh, an exemption for the creation of new accessory dwelling units within the town. I'm going to choose to just table this. We're still uh, awaiting some additional information. I'll second that. Thank you. To next meeting? To the next meeting, yes. Thank you. All in favor of the... You, you, yes. You seconded it? Yeah, I don't know Aye. if we have to. But all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Town Board Resolution 1179 of 2024. Um, this is a resolution to adopt the amendment of Town Code 330 10B, Section 8, to correct a, what's a typographical error, error, excuse me, in the table of use regulation that relates to schools for intellectually disabled. Um, I would like to withdraw this and then uh, re notice it for a public hearing with the correct title. Uh, there are four. Co well, it's co-sponsored by the entire board, so we would all have to agree to that. But I, that's what I would like to do as lead sponsor. I'm fine. Everybody good? Second. Yeah, yes. I'm second. Okay, so withdrawal. Oh, all in favor of doing that, yeah. Aye, and it stays in our code for another. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's necessary, but. Well, we would know, like we to. We did get advice from council that we should do it just to make sure. Mm-hmm. It's not a typographical error, but we'll with you know, fix it. It's okay. Okay. Town Board Resolution 2024 1180, co sponsored by the entire board, 
Notice of Adoption of the Pattern Book for Hampton Bay's Hamlet Center as a component of the Town Comprehensive Plan. Second. I want to say something about this. Um, just to reiterate that Janice, ha uh, that, you know, that change that I mentioned before, Good Ground Park Road would now be Good Ground Park. That's on page 4 and page 22. But in light of the comment that we received, I took another look at the language in the resolution, and I would like to um, adopt this today, but I would like to make one change to the uh, second paragraph of the legislative intent, and that is where it does, it does, in the second paragraph, it does reference that creation of a new North Main Street and access into Good Ground Park, and I don't think that we should affirmatively be stating that so I I'm requesting that we amend the resolution to eliminate after the word promotes I'm sorry can you tell me which paragraph yeah the second paragraph of the legislative intent so okay. it would read the adopted strategic corridor plan promotes and then go to a compact walkable environment and then continue from there. But I'll, I'll second your motion. Can I just can I just make yes. a point before we do that? Yeah. It says that the adopted strategic corridor plan promotes that, and it does. That's what was written in that corridor plan. That's not this plan. Right. But I just don't see the point of reiterating it here in connection with adopting the pattern book. It's almost like That's you're you know reinforcing it. And that was the corridor study. But this is a whole new thing, and I just think people would be more comfortable. Do we have another issue here where we can't change this because we had a public hearing and the legislature? You need to speak to the attorney. Hey, Jim. Yeah, do you cool. have to go to some other public hearing to do that? No, I, this is not. It's the uh, legislative uh, intent. Right, it's, it's the legislative. It's not in the title. That was the that was the biggest issue with yeah. the attorneys in my office about the and myself about the uh, the, uh, the previous Fine, resolution. So asking. Okay. Notice um, uh, of a change to the, on the town board. Why do you need to change? It, it, I'm not it, sure. It does uh, from the town attorney's office, and the change has to be on the town board's desk by no, I believe. And in the legislative it's just intent, the legislative in that intent. Not, if I could, yeah. in that particular par paragraph, it does uh, refer to you know what, what the supervisor is saying, but then it goes on to say. To develop an environment that's you know that promotes walkability, and I, right. I think no, that's I clearly like what we're trying yeah. to do is to right. make a walkable environment with the park connecting it with the rest. That's of the what I would like to do: keep the walkability yeah. portion, but take out the into Good Sound Park because it makes it seem like the road is going into the well, park. I don't think it's a big deal to, to walk into the park. I think the the question was cars going into the park, which that, that right. is valid. Or path, make it a path to walk in. I'm concerned that if we do change the legislative intent, it's going to be used floor, as fodder to sue us. Right, and we've already been we we were just <laughs> we were just threatened with a lawsuit, and now we're talking about changing the legislative intent and adopt a resolution. I think it's fine because I think as it's written, it, it denotes that it's from that other plan. It's not this plan's. This plan is not saying you know what I mean. It says the strategic corridor plan yeah, promotes the creation of a new, which is. Stated in that plan, not this one. Got Promote it. A compact, I know. I just don't want. I know. I'm just saying that. Why are we reiterating that here when that's not the intent of the pattern book? And if this was, and we went out of our way to take out all those photographs, so it wouldn't indicate that we were having a road go into the park. Right. And I, I, I agree with you. And I, and I, and I, any other circumstance, I would say yes. Had we not been threatened with litigation five minutes ago, I almost feel like it's more litigation that would come if we didn't take it out. I, yeah, like I mean, I don't think from the attorney the litigation was. You're talking about the patent book itself, as the supervisor points out. It's just in the legislative intent. I, mean, I don't think it's. Yeah, it's not a substantial change. It's. I understand the reference, and I know that's a point of contention for a lot of people whether that there'll be a road from this proposed development to the. To the good ground park. Is it um, the safest thing though would be to leave it as is? Being what no, we were just threatened with. And somebody is putting up a, a list together. I agree. We step up Belt and suspenders. Sure. About, there was some discussion at the public 
not at the public hearing, but in the public comment portion about some language in the legislative intent that's in the resolution for the adoption of the pattern book. So I thought just to keep everybody on an even keel, we might want to rethink just that one portion of a sentence. But if that's so um, according yeah according to municipal home rule law when you're adopting a local law it must be in its final form on the legislator's desk for seven days excluding sundays and holidays so typically um i like to have at least 10 days built in there um, to be on the safe side um but it yeah tr um legally you really should have it in its final form um for seven days before you adopt or cha make changes can I just ask a question? I mean, the, the the legislative intent contains language. I, I believe the idea of access to good ground is sort of on the periphery of what the actual pattern book is trying to achieve, which is much more holistic in terms of the revitalization and, and providing guidance in terms of that revitalization. This particular language change, in my opinion, that the supervisor is requesting doesn't really change the adoption of, of the pattern book, which is, I think, a much more macro uh, encapsulation of, of, of revitalization, a, a, guide, a guide toward revitalization for the Hampton Bay. Sure. Town. No, I appreciate, I, I appreciate some, that. Isn't there something that says if it's not a significant change, then you don't need to? <clears throat> if it's not substantive. Like um, not for there. There. Yeah, if it's not substantive. Um, in, in my experience, we've always characterized um, non-substantive as uh, Scrivener's errors. Um, because you want to give your colleagues the opportunity to be able to speak about and vote on um, exactly what is going to be adopted. And you have to, you know, the law asks you to give them that time frame in order to do that. Uh, well, let me ask you one more thing then. Is the legislative intent in any way binding on the result? So could somebody mm -hmm. say, well, it was in the legislative intent, so now you really should have the road enter, you know, driving into the pond. So I, I, I have, don't have it in front of me. Sometimes the legislative intent is actually published. Um, I don't know if it's underlined in this scenario. If it's not underlined, um, you know, arguably, um, it's just not my recommendation. Mm -hmm. to change it. Um, it it's, the legislative intent is supposed to be guiding that which you are adopting, right? And if you don't agree with it, you should change it, um, but you need to do that we should hold in an appropriate that. time frame. I, 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 yeah. Like I said, if we, if we weren't just basically told we were going to be sued, I would say change it. But yeah. I mean, you don't have to re-notice it. You just have to um, you, you might you might recall oftentimes I will circulate a memo and you will see in my cover page on the memo exactly what the change is um, and then that just has to be laid on your desks for seven days and then you can adopt uh, the very next opportunity to do so. So I'm not sure um, if there's other uh, time frames that are pressing in terms of adopting this, but if there's an opportunity to um, do it uh, a little more thoroughly and uh, accurately, I would recommend that. I think we have. We, we've been working on this and making changes for I what seems like weeks, of, you know, I mean, through the summer, and now, you know, it's, it's October, and I think we are okay here. I would favor passing it the way it, I would as well. it stands. I think we've, we've, made, we've made substantial changes to the pattern book itself through the process. And, you know, I, I have a feeling if we change this, someone's going to come to the next meeting and say they don't like this or that or the other thing. And it's just we're going down this line of, like I said, as legislators, it's our duty to basically say, are we okay with the pattern book? Are we okay with its intent? If we are, then I think we should move forward. Yeah, and I think we're good with the pattern book itself. This was yeah. just this language in the right. resolution that's providing for its adoption that was a little problematic for me in terms of but I know it's just it's reciting what's in the corridor plan which is already a document that's in existence so changing this wouldn't change that does the 
familiar if the patent book itself makes reference to the access to and we removed all of that from right. the pattern book we yes. removed even the pictures of that in the pattern book it's true yeah and then like you said removing it from here doesn't remove it from that document it's still in that document and mm -hmm. and this paragraph clearly refers to walkability mm -hmm. i mean it, it says it walkability walkable like six times you know subsequent to the to what you're saying here so i mean i believe that the intent is to provide a walkable downtown area in Hampton Bays for the record. and connecting the park. For the record, Walking. I'm, I'm agreeing with Councilman Skeeter. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, we'll read Not it. Not the first time. We'll read it to, inter we're interpreting it that access into the park is walkable yes. access. Make, okay. the, make note that in, in the minutes for, <laughs> for future consideration. On, so. on what subject? On the green or on the pair? <laughs> or both? All right, so all in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution ID 2024-1181 uh, to authorize the Conic Bay Region CPF tax refund pursuant to the first time home buyer's exemption for Victor Martinez and Nimsi Solis D. Martinez. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. That was co sponsored with Council Member Scrivoni. I say pass. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 1182 of 2024 authorizes the supervisor to sign documents for the transfer of sanitary flow credits as it relates to the Star Aquatic Project located at 344 McGee Street, Tuckahoe. And it's co sponsored with Supervisor Moore. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 1183 of 2024. I am going to withdraw. They have received a grant to cover the fees. So. Wow. Oh, that's nice. Wow. It's $525. Very nice. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Town Board Resolution 2024-1185 to adopt the 2024 Standard Workday and Reporting Resolution for Elected Appointed Officials. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1186, co-sponsored with Councilman Powell, to accept the retirement of Deborah Keller, website manager in the Citizens Response Center. Second, and we're going to miss her. Yes. She did a wonderful job. Prior All in there. favor? Uh, yeah, and I agree that uh, she, I think it was almost six, 16 years that. Yeah. 16 years. Congratulations, Deborah. Deborah was here and uh, she served in the town clerk's office, town council's office. Thank you, Deborah. Yeah. Yes. She was digitizing Maybe. those books that Henry Moeller wanted to get going on. Yeah. <laughs> Back yes. in 2006, uh, seven. So we wish her all the best in the yes. next step Absolutely. in her career and thank you for her service. Uh, Town Board Resolution 2024-1187 to appoint Alyssa Robinson to Engineering Aid in Municipal Works. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024-1188 terminate an employee in police communications. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board Resolution 2024 1189-1189 to appoint Thomas Crime Board to Public Safety Dispatcher 1 in the Police Department. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Town Board oh. Resolution 1190. Oh. Oh. We did it. No, we have. Another. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, that was me. My bad. See, I was like going with the phone. No, you were good. You were good. Town Board Resolution 1191 of 2024. Notice of public hearing to consider, consider amending Town Code Chapter 312. Vehicles and traffic amending and adding parking prohibited in designated locations regulations on a portion of County Road 80, Montel Highway East. Coast. Second. Thank you for following up on that. Yes, yes thank you. McNamara. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the walk on is Town Board. Resolution ID number 47703 to accept the warrant number 19. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
All right. Well, now, um, no one else has anything else I'd like to discussion. I'd like to, uh, I move to adjourn into executive session for confidential legal advice and then to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.